Um, hello everyone. So you are welcome to the um, course in abstract algebra. Uh, we've looked at uh, groups already. We have defined what a group is, all right? And then we said that for a structure, right? So forget about this for now. Uh, if you have a structure G um, star, right? That's a set and that's a binary operation on that set. For this to be a group, all right, you need at least three conditions. You need three conditions to be satisfied. You need associativity, right? This guy has to be um, associative, right? You need to have um, an identity element in G, right? Say that if I take any element X in G, E star X, X star E leads me back X. Okay, so condition one, condition two. Um, the third one is that for, um, for this to qualify as a group, if I take any element X in G, this must have an inverse, such that if I take X star its inverse, all right, or X inverse star X, it should give me the identity element, um, which is in G. So once these three conditions are satisfied, this is the group. Okay, so for now, uh, there are a couple of theorems um, that are important uh, under groups, and so we want to look at a couple of them and prove them. So in the next couple of videos, I'm going to be writing down the, um, the theorems, and then we'll, we'll go through the proofs. Okay, so we'll be using the definition of um, groups a lot, all right, and some of the things that we've learned already um, in abstract algebra about binary equations and all of that. Okay. So good. So this one says that if you have um, a group, this identity element is unique. There is one and only one identity element in the group. So that is basically what we want to prove. Well, to prove uniqueness in general, right? Um, in mathematics, if you want to prove that um, something is unique, what you do is that you suppose that um, we want to say that a is an element that is in G and it's unique, how do you show that? show that? Well, the most common way you do that is that assume there are two of them, right? Suppose that A and B are both identity elements. And then you go through, use the conditions of the theorem to show that finally that um, A here is equal to B. If A is equal to B, then of course um, there's only one of them, right? It's either A or B. They are equal in a way. Alright? So that is how you, you prove uniqueness. So we want to show that um, if, if G is a group and there's an identity element, there's only one identity element. So as often you, you start with the, uh, the statement of the theorem, so we can let to prove it, we can let um, let G, if you like, be a group, right? That is given to us. And uh, we can let E1, E2, alright, which are in G, be identity, identity elements. Okay? So, right, so we are supposing that there are two of them. I want to show that they are equal. If they are equal, then the identity is unique. That is, the, that is the idea behind it. Well, if E1 is an identity element, then from the definition of a group, we know that if I take E1, if, if X, for instance, is an element in G, then we know that since E1 is an identity element, E1 star X must be equal to X star E1, and this must give me x back, right? You can call this equation one if you want. Also, right? Also, since E2, we are supposing that E2 is an identity element, it also means that E2 star x, x star E2, this also must be equal to x. That is because we are assuming that both of them are identity elements, okay? So the question is, how do you prove that E1 is equal to E2? This is what we want to show. Once we are able to show this, then we have shown that the identity element is unique. 
Okay. Uh, good. So now from um, from uh, these two equations, note that note from one one says if I take any x and operate it on e one, right? X on e one or e one on x, I should get that x. This x can be any element in in g. Okay. Now e two here is an element in g, so we can replace x with e two, right? So since since e two, right? Is an element in G from equation one. From equation one, we can write E1 star E2 must be equal to E2 star E1. This must give me must give me E2. If you want, this is you can call this equation three. You see that? And then from equation two, we are saying that E2 is an identity, and I can operate it on any element. Well, E1 is an element in G, so I can replace X with E1, okay? So again, since E1 here is an element in G, then from equation two, I will have that E2 star E1 is equal to E1 star E2. That should give me back E1, call this equation four, okay? So now from three and four, right? From three and four, okay. E one there. See that E one. If you like, E one is equal to this guy, or maybe you see it here. E one is E two star E one, right? But from equation three, E two E one is equal to E two. This is equal to E two. Therefore, E one is equal to E two. Hence. Right? Hence the identity, the identity element is unique. Okay? So that is often the, um, how you prove uniqueness in general, right? Assume there are two of them. If there are two of them, they should satisfy these conditions from these conditions. We can show that E1 is equal to E2 and therefore the identity element is unique. Okay? Good. Um, also in the group, remember that in the definition of the group, you have uh, the hand inverse. If I take any element x in the group G, right, x must have an, uh, an inverse, say x to the negative one, right? So we want to show that the inverse of any elements in the group is unique as well. In other words, if I take x, I can't have two, two uh, inverses, all right? So let's, um, let's write that theorem down and then um, prove it. Okay, so we have, so be careful here. So let G be a group, um, and let X be an element in G. Okay, so let me write down the formal statement that you have uh, in your notes. Uh, let this be a group, and let X be an element in G. Okay, then, then X has only one inverse in G. Okay, this I think it, this is called theorem two points in your notes. I'm only writing this because that's the same thing in your notes. Okay, so um, if G is a group and X is um, an element in X, then X, there's only one um, identity element, right? It has only one identity element in B. So we're going to use the same, the same uh, trick, right? As we did for this one, for the identity. So how do we prove that? Okay, so to prove it, to prove it, again, you assume that there are two inverses. So suppose, so you can let again, let G, you always start with the statement of the theorem, right? Let G be a group. Group and let X be an element in G and E, uh, of course, in G, be the identity, identity, uh, 
right? Once a group it has an identity element. Okay? Also let A and B be inverses of X. I'm assuming that X has two of inverses A and B, and then I will prove that A is equal to B. Okay? If A is equal to B, then the inverse uniqueness of not identity of inverse. Okay. Uniqueness um, of inverse. Okay. So so you write down the nine statements um, from here, and then this is based on the fact that I want to prove uh, want to prove um, uniqueness. Well, from the definition of a group, right? If A is the inverse of X, then if I take A star X and I take X star A, right? It should give me the identity element, right? Since B is um, an identity, if I do this, and I do X star B, this should also give me the identity element. Let's call that which you do. Okay? So um, we want to we want to show that, you know that I want to show that A is equal to B. This is this is this is what we are going. So you always must keep an eye on on that, right? This is what really what you want to show. But we know that since E, since E is the identity element, I can write A to be equal to whichever one I bring first. A can be written as E, um, E star A or A star E, right? Because E is the identity element. Okay. Good. But note that E, all right, from uh, equation two, E can be written like x star b or b star x. I can write, I can use um, any of these ones. But I want to I want to end up with b on the right hand side, right? So I can use um, I can use this one, right? I can use this. So in place of e, I can write e as b star what? x star a. You see that? Okay? Now Right, because e, e from equation 2 e is equal to b star x. Okay. Now it's a group, so star has an attributivity, right? So I can use the attributivity here. I can write this as b star x star a. Okay, I can rewrite this as that. Now this is equal to b star. Now from equation 1, x star a is equal to e. So this is actually e. Okay, but B is the identity, so B star B gives me B. Okay, so this implies that A is equal to B. Hence, the inverse, the inverse of any X in G is unique. Or there's only one, one and only one inverse. All right? And, uh, Okay. And also, there are various ways you, you could arrive at, at this, right? Using various combinations of this, but the idea is the same. You could you could start with B instead of with A. You can also start with B and then follow the same procedure if you end up with B is equal to A. Okay, so if you could try that. Okay? Okay, so um, I'll pause this one and I'll write down, um, I want to reduce the size of my videos. So I'm going to pause and then write down uh, do two more theorems, okay, and then and then we'll go we'll go from there.